Hi, everyone. I, I hope you have a good evening. Sean, I hear you very, very sick, but uh, hope we're praying for you. Hope you're getting well soon. And um, today, my brother Ipa will take the the good um, uh, story about, uh, especially the dream of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Today, Ipa is study on Greece and which is very powerful one and uh, to to know about it and uh, we will listen to Ipa what he will bring to us maybe we'll learn something new today as well and um, my brother there is uh, two things touch my heart so much in uh, this uh, there is two story especially um, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel and the the one the, the other one is uh, two thousand three hundred days. Oh, these yeah. two these two bring me more closer to God, and I know God existed through this two story, yeah. and I know He existed because it's come true exactly like God say. Amen. It is not finished; it's still going on in the future, but soon. Everything will be done the same like when uh, Nebuchadnezzar come, when Nebuchadnezzar was there and then uh, Medo-Persia took over and without uh, knowing, uh, there was shock when when when, Nebigan, when uh, uh, Medo-Persia coming and also Medo-Persia also shocking when Greece take over and then we have a division until today. But uh, God said he will come and set his kingdom forever and ever. And we're waiting for that. But we will see because we have another another two to go. And Ipa will do this one today. And then there is another two to go. We will find out uh, how long God will take. Maybe that's not long according to the scripture. Now, we have to say the word of prayer before we started. Let's pray. Our Lord, thank you so much for your love, for your kindness, for your word, and for your Holy Spirit toward us, in us, and to help us to understand your word. Without your Holy Spirit, Lord, it is impossible for us to understand your word. We need your guidance. We need, um, we need you working in our heart yourself, Lord. Our work is vain. We need you so much. Yes. Please be with Iper today, and probably you can put word in in Iper mouth, which maybe Iper read before, and which is very good for us to hear. Maybe he might forget, but your Holy Spirit will remind him and put this word into his mouth, into his mind, and he might share it to us, and we might learn something new which we never heard before. Amen. And bless my brother Sean and put your holy hand upon him and uh, he might recover soon and be ready for Bible study again. Mm. Thank you for your blessing and bless everybody who even they didn't come today. Bless them and be with them and some maybe still sick and be with them and give them their healing because healing is come from you, Lord. It's not come from anybody else. But we we'll trust you and we leave every brothers and sister into your hand. Bless each one of us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, James, for the welcome. Um, thank you for um, um, praying for us as well. And um, yeah, um, I also want to hope that Sean feels better next time. Um, mm. My brother has lost his voice. That's why he's on silent. We put him on mute. We don't want to um, hear his, him, him saying anything because we want him to heal up much quicker. May God bless you, Sean, still being here tonight and, and still taking the time out to, to be with us and to share this message. Mm. Um, just a reminder, we do when we do finish the, the, the talk of today, um, we do have an email that you can send emails to if you've got any questions or any queries that you would want to know more. It's at let's talk about God 3 at gmail.com. And mm -hmm. then let's talk about God, one word, 
at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook page if you want to join our Facebook page. Uh, yeah, let's talk about God3, sorry, at gmail.com. And we also have an email page that you, or an email, sorry, a Facebook page that you can look up and uh, probably put questions in there and our messages as well. So hopefully, um, as I share with you, we may learn something about God's character, but also more about the love that he has for us, um, that he that is always there for us. Um, uh, now, in last week, we, we studied, last week we studied, um, Last week we studied um Medopasia. Medopasia. Just one second, guys. Just hold on. I just need to do some. Sorry for that, guys. Um Sean, I do apologize. We just said somebody to, to go out. Um, that's why I couldn't concentrate. So the car, the, we this is our third week. Um, Sean discussed the introduction, but he also discussed um, um, Babylon. And I am doing, I did the Medes and the Persians last week, and I'm doing Greece as well this week. Um, so we, we've discussed three kingdoms, which was Babylon was the first one which Sean discussed. And we discuss um, the Medes and the Persians and this week it will be Greece. And next week it will be James that will introduce us to the last, the fourth kingdom uh, or the last uh, image uh, of, of, um, of steel um, and the 10 toes as well. Um, so when we look at these, these prophecies, we always need to make sure that we do read both, all the, the whole chapter two and chapter seven and chapter eight. We cannot do it tonight because we just got a limited time to discuss a few things and, and share a few things about um, these prophecies. So there's just snippets of certain things taken out for discussion and questions so that we can understand it better. But please, if you do study this, you have to read all these chapters through for you to understand. Chapter 2, chapter 7, and chapter 8. Chapter 2 speaks about the uh, image. Um, chapter 7 speaks about the beast. And chapter 8 speaks more about the, the, the ram and the goat. So I'm going to share a little bit on each chapter. And we're going to see the unfolding of the kingdom of Greece um, clearly in the Bible. So I just want to share my screen at this time so that we can all read together and spend this time together. Um, so uh, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the screen? James, can you see the screen? Yeah. All good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So, so if we try and work through this together, um, I'm hoping that we can read it together and I'll ask the questions as well. So, um, let's start first with the first uh, uh, in Daniel, chapter 2, the vision of the statue. And the statue had different metals in it. We see the, the base metal, which is gold, which everybody loves. I'm sure we all love gold. We want to buy gold rings and we want to buy um, gold um, pendants for people. And people buy gold earrings. And people love gold. Um, and normally when you get to the bottom ones, it's, it's normally easy to get and, and it's not as beautiful as gold. And we'll start with um, a little bit with what um, the statue stands for, or the description of the statue. If we can turn to Daniel chapter 2, verse 32 to 33. Can you read that for me, James, if you don't mind? Daniel chapter 2? Chapter 2, verse 32. 32 to 33? 33, yes. Yes, sure. 32 to 33. Let's, let, let's read it. Um, 32 said, This image head was of fine gold, his breast and his arm of silver, his belly and his thigh of brass, his leg of iron, 
his feet part of iron and part of clay. Mm, thank you. So, so we see that there James clearly has read in the Bible that the head of gold, which Sean spoke about, represents Babylon. Um, the chest and the arms of silver represents Medo and Persia, which we spoke about last week. If you want to know more about it, you can always look at these uh, videos. We did load them in. And the belly of, of the thigh and the bronze that we're going to speak about tonight, which represents Greece. And you will see it unfolding. And we will clearly see this because Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of the statue and Daniel um, interpreted the dream through Christ Jesus who gave him the, the understanding of it and also showed him the, the vision as well. And uh, then we have the vision that Daniel, the two visions that Daniel himself saw. One night he was sleeping on a bed and another time he was shown another vision or the, the angel came back and spoke to him about it. So let's go into the first. If you can look at the image, there's the gold, Babylon. You see the chest of silver and the arms of silver. Um, chest and arms of silver and where we speak about where, I, where I'm speaking about tonight is the belly and the thighs of bronze which represents which represents the leopard as well but we're going to go into it piece by piece now we can see let's read Daniel chapter 2 verse 39 I'll read this after you another kingdom will arise inferior to yours Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over all the earth. What is so, um, of that verse, what is so clearly represented, um, clearly shows us something clearly, is that it's funny, for the first time, it says it will rule over the whole earth. It wasn't just part of the earth, but the whole earth. So if you, if we look and we ask the question, did, did the Babylon rule the whole earth? No. Um, there were still the Egyptians and, and all the other nations. And the other kingdom who went, uh, who came out, Medes and the Persians, they destroyed the Egyptians. They destroyed Lydia and they also destroyed, what was the other nation again? Um, Babylon. So those three nations, they came. But we see here the old earth and we will see that it's the four corners of the earth that this kingdom Greece will go into and destroy and take it unto themselves. And we will see, see more characteristics of this kingdom. So I just want to ask a few questions just on, 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 on the image of, of, of bronze, right? Uh, the bronze side of it. Uh, how does the transition between kingdoms reflect God's sovereignty? What do you guys think? Does it describe God's sovereignty? The transition between these kingdoms. I just write something down here. It said, while God is all-powerful, yeah. his, his use of that power is limited by his own character and of love. Is honoring or another one accommodating, another word accommodating, the free will of others and his desire to make others happy. It is. God wants us to be joyful, isn't it, James? And happy. exactly. It doesn't take our freedom away. Um, although he's all powerful and is mm. the power to stop things. He allows things to work as we choose to choose. And we will go into that a little bit at the end as well, because it's important that we do understand the principles of God's kingdom. Like you says, he, do, he limits himself because of the love he has for us. Mm. Well said there, James. Thank you. Mm. Um, I wish my friend Sean could speak too, but we don't want to give him the chance to do so. Okay. Yeah. Let's just keep it in mind, Sean, and enjoy and enjoy as we go on. So what can we learn from the fact that Greece he symbolizes bronze in the in this in, in the statue? What do we think bronze represents? What does it symbolize? You know, the thing the thing I learned, uh, maybe that is a good thing to mention that in our talk. The same like people, some people might just say, or some Christian might just say, why God use gold, 
silver, bronze, iron, and then iron mixed with clay. Because um, gold used gold because Babylon used lots of gold. Yeah. Even their plate, their cup, many things they use, their hand, hand door, all is gold. They love gold. And, and the other, the other uh, vision for Daniel, God used lion because lion is, uh, is a, uh, what do you call this? I forget, like each country have an animal. The same like in Mauritius, we have dodos. Yep. And, and um, in Australia, we have kangaroo and what are, what are the, like a bird as well. But, um, but uh, God used uh, a lion because uh, they used to, uh, everything, wherever you look at Babylon, you can see the lion picture there. And yep. uh, the same like uh, silver for, uh, for Medo-Persia, and the same reason, because they use a lot of silver, mm. you know? And then you come to bronze, Greece use a lot of bronze. Now you have the motorboat used by, by bronze, a lot of things used by bronze. But when you look at the iron, look at the Roman soldier. Everything was with uh, even their, their knife, their, their flesh or whatever you look at it, and their helmet, a lot of things they use metal, you use uh, uh, iron. That's yeah, and God and chooses that. Yeah, and if you see the, the is it degradation of, of quality of all these metals, you find the refined, it says fine gold on the head, and then it goes to silver, and then you go to bronze. Now, if you look at the Olympics, it's funny that they use the same um, qualities. That the person that comes first has mm -hmm. the head of gold, which is gold, and then you win um, um, silver, yeah. and then yeah. you get bronze. So the third place was always bronze, and, and the fourth place will probably be the be, be, be <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it becomes weaker and weaker. And uh, and bronze also is an alloy. Now, what the alloy means, it means it's a combination of two metals, which is tin and copper. Yes. So it's, not, it's not a pure metal, yeah. When, when you look at gold, gold is more value. You know, it's very, uh, very uh, like a higher value. Higher value. Yep. Like when you look at uh, uh, silver, but silver is more strong than gold. Yeah. And now it's coming down like this. But when you look at uh, iron, iron is less value than, than all of them. All of but them. But it's more stronger. Stronger it, than It's all. more solid, right. yes. more solid, more stronger than all of them. All of them. Yes. But when it's come down to the foot, iron and clay, oh, it's coming part of stronger and part of weak. weak. And they try to mingle with themselves, but they Make can, it's not, it never will happen to become one, the same like the other kingdom. Never. Yeah. Until yeah. Jesus Christ coming himself. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, uh... James, I can't say thank you to Sean because he didn't say much. He, he, she, he will be really appreciated if you say that. <laughs> thank you, Sean, for your smile there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay, so, so we go. That is chapter two we, we spoke about. And see, it's just very short. And we're going to speak more on chapter seven because there's much more for us to see. So if you look at if you look at the, the image or the picture that is next to the the the, um, the, the verses that we've put down, we can see the statue, but if we look to the right, we can see the animals that each of these kingdoms represent. Mm. And uh, we're going to read more about this leopard with four heads and four wings. And, and this is in Daniel chapter seven, the vision of the four beasts. I'm going to read this and I'm going to try and read it finish. Uh, Daniel 7, verse 2 to 8, um, and this leopard that represents Greece. But I want, I, I started from the beginning because there's something that Sean shared at the beginning. I also shared it last week a little bit, but I want to go deeper into it this week. 
um, Daniel said, in my vision at night, uh, sorry, this is Daniel chapter 7, verse 2 to 8. Daniel said, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me were four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Now, I've, I've made that bold because I'm going to come back to it at the end of uh, all these prophecies. I want to speak about that four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. And, and four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. It's, it's funny that they say four, that four winds churning up the sea, which means lifting up the sea water and making it rough the great sea, and the four great beasts that actually comes out of the sea. And we know what sea represents. Sea represents people, identity of people. And this was in the Middle East or, or where um, Iraq is now in areas like Israel and places like it. Each different from it, other. Sorry, James. It's was... uh, for, the, for the sea, you're talking about the water, which yeah. represent people and nation. Nation. They can they can read that in Revelation chapter seventeen verse verses chapter seventeen verse fifteen. Thank you, James. Thank you. Have you got the verse there in front of you? You can read it if you want to. No, no. I'm just saying that for the people who who listen and they might see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do have it, you can read it as well. So. Oh, you, you want to it. read it? Yes. You want yes. Me to read I don't it? want us to say. I want people to see it, to hear it for themselves. Okay. Okay. But if you do everything ready, then it's all good, right? And then the first was like a lion. It had wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a human being. And the mind of a human being was given to it. And Sean has really explained that so well of Nebuchadnezzar standing up. And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one side of its sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up and eat your full of flesh. And we see that the full of flesh is the three ribs that's in its mouth, um, destruction and pain and suffering which I spoke about last week, that they didn't even spare the children that were in the womb of, of, of women. They killed babies, they killed everybody. They were very cruel, the Medes and the Persians. After that, I looked, and there before me, this is verse 6, and this is, uh, this is why I'm, I put it in bold. This is for this week, and it says, After that, I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard. And on its back, it had four wings. That is important, four wings. Like those of birds, this beast had four heads and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked and there before me was the fourth beast, which James is, James, James is going to speak next week. Terrifying and frightening and very powerful. James was saying iron is so strong and it crushes all the other metals. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot. Whatever was left, it was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. Verses eight. While it was thinking, while I was thinking, sorry, about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. The horn had eyes like the eyes of human beings, and a mouth spoke boastfully. And this. This last piece, I put all the pieces there because I didn't want to leave anything out, but we're going to only speak about verse 6. But it's important that we see the unfolding of what God prophesied in Daniel chapter 2, and now he's shown it to Daniel himself, um, what's going to happen there. And if we look at the bottom, that is the verse that I wrote. So after that, I looked, we're going to go back to verse 6. There before me, another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. Um, the leopard with four wings and four heads symbolizes the swift rise of Alexander and the great Greek empire and its subsequent division into four parts of, of 
four parts after his death. So we, I, I'm, I want to ask a few questions just before then. Um, I just want to ask a few questions on this piece that we see in verses six. Um, we know that the lion uh, with eagle's wings was Babylon. Um, the rear raised on one side was Medes and the Persians. Um, the leopard with four wings and four heads now we said is Greece. And the terrifying beast with iron teeth is the, the Roman Empire. Um, so now we know that, that this is the Grecian Empire that um, Alexander the Great was the, the leader of or the king of. And he was a powerful and a very strong, good fighter. And he knew how to fight. He was very smart. I remember Tyre, he wanted to go into Tyre. And they didn't have ships. Alexander the Great never had ships. So what he said to his men, we'll just build a ramp. And they just filled things in with rocks and sand until they got to Tyre because Tyre was they had a lot of riches and they overcame them too. They had good fighters. But he was always a smart general as well. Um, I just want to ask a few questions. Um, can we turn, to, James, have you got uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 17 to 18 with you? Daniel 7, yes, Daniel chapter 7, verse 17, because it explains the fourth piece. Can you just turn to the, those? 7, 17, yes, sure. 17 and 18, yep. 17 and 18? Yes. Yes, 17 said, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Verse 18, but the scent of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And ever. So we can see that it speaks about the four, that these are four kingdoms, and we understand that they are four, these beasts are four kingdoms. So what is significance about the speed and power of the Greek empire as symbolized by a leopard? What do you think it symbolizes? The speed. Yeah, and it's oh. powerful. What does it symbolize? What do you uh, think? As um, as the wings in the Bible symbolize speed. Yeah. A speed. You can. You can. Uh, anybody can have a look uh, for the wing speed in Abaku, chapter one, verses six to eight. Jeremiah, chapter four, verses thirteen. Exodus chapter 19, verse 4. Yeah. Anytime they want to have a look, they can read it to understand about the speed, the, the Bible talking for the for the kingdom of, of bronze. Yeah. Uh, yes, Greece. Yeah. So when you speak about wings, I want to ask, I wish I could have asked Sean because he flies a lot. But I want to ask you, James, if you fly to Mor if you go to Mauritius, do you want to take a car or do you want to fly? To get oh, I fly, I fly. Fly, you want to go on wings. and then More then quicker. More quicker. It's yes. Fast. Yes. And also a leopard is a faster animal than a lion. And it's mm -hmm. vicious as well. Um, and um, what else? And the four heads also represent something. What do you think the four heads represent as well? The, the, the four heads, according to the history we find, uh, after Alexander died, his brother Philip and Alexander's son took over. That is, two persons took over to represent, to take the place of Alexander. Because they are very weak, 12 years later, both kings were slain. Yep. And then Antigonus take over. He was opposed by the yeah, he was opposed by the condition, by the coalition, by a coalition of four powerful leaders. Cassander, Cassandra, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. This four person took over. That is the four head. We see there the four head represent and as a four king take over uh, bronze or Greece. Yeah, thank yes. you. See, they took over from from Alexander the Great, and 
out of one of them, the Roman Empire comes. One of them becomes a Roman Empire, and then it goes further. You'll explain that next week. And it's 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 important for us to understand also those four heads and four wings also represent something else. It represents direction. So if I if I want to explain, it is why the the word news means it's for everybody. It's north, east, west, and south. It means that this Grecian empire just didn't go in three directions like the Medes and the Persians. They went all across the world. Mm. They even conquered India as well. So uh, part of India or some of India. So they wanted, so Alexander the Great wanted to conquer everything. And um, we will see in, 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 in the next one that when he was at his highest point, he actually died. Um, what does a vision teach us about the rise and fall of world empires compared to God's eternal kingdom? So if we compare God's eternal kingdom, why is it that God's eternal kingdom will stand forever? And why is the empires today, they can't stand forever? We can see it in this world today. There's always this fighting and trying to see who's stronger than the next person. Why do we have this? Uh, for me personally, to be honest with you, Man kingdom, I call that man kingdom because man is too selfish. Yes. Uh, they will uh, they will help only one nation or fight again as a nation. The same like uh, I heard about um, about the king, the king or minister, prime minister of uh, Jerusalem talking about what they will do with uh, one nation who uh, who attack them attack their, uh, this, uh, their forefathers a long time ago uh, after they left Egypt and uh, come out of Egypt to go to the wilderness. And Amelakai, Melakai or something like that, I forget the name of it. And uh, But what those people know today, they don't know nothing. They are innocent, those people today. You cannot attack people today for something past of their family. That is completely wrong according to the scripture. You know, and uh, we're supposed to love each other. We're supposed, because God give each one a talent. What are you doing with your talent? And then you will say, I kill so many people, Lord, for you. Is, is that bring, will bring them to the, to, is, that, is that love? No. You, you know, I can say a lot of things. Definitely, those <laughs> kingdom, if you will have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, hundred, it will be the same. It will be worse. It will yeah. not be good to bring peace, joy, love into this world. But yeah. we need Jesus Christ. He gave us, he showed us what kind of love God have when he was on the planet Earth. He loved everybody. He said, I have other sheep outside. I will bring them in. You see, he loved everybody. John 3, 16, God so loves the world. Now you said, kill those people. This not make sense for me. Yeah, it's like me, sir. That's all. That's all I can say. And, and, and James, it's it's so sad that it happens today as well. Mm. We these stories, but men has not changed. Humanity has not changed. No, we 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 destroy one another so easily. So we are, and we are so comfortable with it. Yes. And so you know, many people don't believe in God, so they believe in the survival of the fittest. So they say we come from a certain mixture in the ground and then like the Muba or like the Hydra, and we, we develop to become human beings over time. And uh, when you learn to be stronger than the next person, you actually promoting them gene to go to grow stronger, which is which doesn't make sense mm. because if I have to destroy you and take you out of the picture. Uh, 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 I'm going to be by myself and nobody survives by themselves. Nobody's an island. I just want to give an example of God's kingdom. Um, in, in, in God's kingdom, we can, we can look at nature and we see God's kingdom. And we are stronger than trees. I can take a, a chopper and chop down a tree or I can take a, 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 a what do you call it, a... a a, a chick saw, hex saw, anything and cut down a tree. And then I say, I'm stronger than you, tree. You're nothing compared to me. But is that tree that gives me oxygen 
and mm. I cannot survive without the tree, although the tree is weaker than me. Mm. I can give it the carbon dioxide and there will be no tree to take up the carbon and we'll all die. So it's, it's God's kingdom. We cannot work upon only the strong must survive. We need to help people who are weak and which we, we saw that Jesus came and he searched for the weak, for the one that's enslaved, for the one that's not strong. Mm. He was always trying to get them up. So we all live together in harmony. And this is the eternal kingdom. That is why things will last. Uh, because we can see that in nature. The one gives the other and the other one gives back. And it's this interconnectivity of our lives that builds, that builds life. It doesn't break down life. Mm -hmm. And that is why the kingdom of God is so much better than the kingdoms of this world. And, mm -hmm. and until Jesus comes, this world will not change. Or until the hearts of people will not turn to God, this world will not change. And we will continually fight them and break each other down. So we and, see. Sorry. And when Jesus Christ will come to take those who have been uh, ready to go with him, and those who did not use their talent, they didn't use it. They didn't. They just bury it. Others, yep. Didn't help anybody else. Just kept it for themselves, right? Yep, James. Mm, that's it. They will yeah. stay there. We, we. You look at nature again. And we look at how God created us. If I go to a gym and I don't practice this muscle, people, they don't practice the muscles of walking and they just lay in bed, they will lose it. Yes. What you don't put in or what you don't put in, you won't get out. And mm. this is God's nature, you know. Uh, we need to put in so we, we can get out. Yeah. Um, so we see now that this leopard, and the four wings, like we've discussed, and the heads, which, which symbolize these channels, symbolize the surprise of Alexander the Great. Um, um, he was a, for the great empire, and it's subsequently the division into four parts after his death. So he died suddenly. At the age of 33, he died. And like you shared, James, the generals that came in took over his position, and they became kingdoms on their own. I just want to go to the next slide, mm -hmm. um, which is this one. Um, now, people would say, why, why devote almost three chapters to explaining the same thing um, about the, Greece, the Greeks and the Persians and, and what's going to happen in the future? But I think God wanted to make keep on making clearer of actually how this, where, where the world is going in what direction. And God wanted us to be assured that he knows and he wants us to know what's going to happen and what's taking place. And that is why we go into Daniel chapter 8, which speaks about the vision of the ram and the goat. Now, last week, I don't know if you can see my pointer. I was pointing here at the Medes and the Persians. These weren't the Medes and the Persians. This is the Greece on, on the left-hand side coming from the west. Going to the east, that's what the Bible says, where the, where the, um, the, the goat was, right? Mm. Oh, sorry, the, 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 the ram was, was on the east, and the goat, I keep on getting confused with goat and ram. <laughs> and and, and, and the, the, the goat is the one that, that smashes the ram. So let's read it. Um, James, can you read this first part? Um, Daniel chapter 8, verse 3 to 8. Yes. I think you got it there, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Yep. I look up, and there before me, and there before me was a ram, with two horns, standing beside the canal, and the horns were long, and and the horns were were long. One of the horns was longer than the other, but grew up later. Verse four. He said, "I watch." The, the ram has its as its charge toward as it charge towards the west and the north and the south. No animal could stand against it, mm -hmm. and none could rescue from its power. It did as it pleased and became great. 
as I was thinking about this, suddenly a goat with a prominent uh, horns between its eyes came from the west, crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. Verse six, it came toward the two horns, on two horns ram, I, I had seen, I had seen, standing beside the corner and charged at it in great rage. Uh, I saw it attack the ram furiously, striking the ram and shattering its two horn. The ram was powerless to stand against it. The goat knocked it at knocked it to the ground and trampled on it, and none could rescue the ram from its power. The goat became very great, but at the height of its power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place, four prominent horns grew up toward the four winds of heaven. Mm. And then I just want to read um, the interpretation by the angel. So later the angel came and told Daniel what, what these, um, these um, the ram and the, the goat is. Um, Daniel 8 verse 20 to 22. The two horned ram that you saw represents the kings of Mer Me Media and Persia. Verse 21, the shaggy goat is the king of Greece and the large horn between its eyes is the first king. The four horns that replace the one that was broken off represents four kingdoms that will emerge from his nations but will not have the same power. And um, I just want to ask, so James, um, what do you think if you didn't have verse, verse uh, chapter 8, verse 20 and 22, can you read within there that it speaks about the same kingdoms in the in the image and in the uh, the leopard. Uh, how, can you, how can you know that that is Greece that it's speaking about that um, the the goat? The, 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 the goat the the goat what got only one horns in front. One horn, and, yeah. and that horns represent Alexander. Alexander. Yep. Yes, and. And uh, and after oh. that, am I grass? Greece, yes, Greece. No, Greece, yes, Greece. Yeah, Greece. When this horn is broken, and then later on we have another. Oh. We on the other side, you have the four heads. Yes, at the bottom there. Yep. Yes, the four heads, which is represent another four kings. Yeah, but so, uh, before this four king coming, one uh, of his son and another guy just took uh, the place of uh, Alexander, but very quick, about maybe 12 years, there was been murder. And uh, after that, there is another four guy took over. I just mentioned the name before. Yes. Yeah. So we can see the four heads in the leopard. Yes, the four heads in the leopard, yes. You can see the four horns of, the, of this goat. And we also can see the one, like you said, the single horn that was Alexander the Great. Is mm. there one other thing that also shows us almost the same of, um, that shows us about the leopard, that directly shows us about the, the leopard? Is there some resemblance about the, rep, uh, the leopard? Is there anything else? Uh, uh, I think the, the, the part where it says crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. Remember wings? Yes. The leopard had wings without touching the ground. And the whole earth represents that it went in different directions on the earth. So it had, it moved swiftly and it went across. It doesn't say it was riding along the ground, but it was crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. But you can see also all from 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 Babylon come down to Rome and the division, yeah. and uh, how much stronger you are stronger. One day 
you will come lower, you will come down, and somebody will take you over. But when God take his kingdom, none of them will come in again. Why is that, do you think? It's because they don't give their lives to God for the protection. And, and, and that is why I'm going to share a story later about Job and the protection that we have in Christ Jesus. And there's always this destructive power that's all around us. But when we don't want to follow, or we don't want to have God in our life. God is a gentleman and he gives us the freedom to choose. And then men's men's ways actually, men and Satan's ways actually fulfill our lives. And that is what happens to us. It just falls apart. You look at um, Alexander the Great, according to the records or history, we don't know how true it is. Maybe somebody poisoned him or I don't know. But when he's finally won everything, he's got everything. He says, I've got everything. I've, I've taken over the whole world. He gets drunk. And he made a mixture of different alcohols. He probably thought, I'm going to show you, I can even drink alcohol and not die. And, and different wines and stuff. And he made a concoction that killed him. He was uh, so intoxicated with alcohol that he died at the age of 33, at the pinnacle of his life, because it was all about him. It was all about him. I believe, I believe when God will take his kingdom, because God knows from the past, from the present, from to the future, he knows everything. Yeah. But God knows this controversy will never repeat again. And also, many people now know God's character and his government, and they will they want they prefer to be with God instead of this world. But there is many people who still love this world and they didn't care about God. But those people who have been loving God and, and want to, to be with God, the same like the thief, the thief, uh, the thief on the cross, you know, and, uh, and also you have, um, you have uh, the king of, the king of, uh, what is his name? The, the worst king in the Bible, Manasseh. Manasseh, you know, Manasseh and also uh, Nebuchadnezzar know now the kind of God they worship, you know, yeah. but those yeah. people will be with God forever and never try to make any, another great controversy again. Never. Is that the reason God said they will, they know me? The same like uh, the, the sheep knows is a shepherd and they will follow the shepherd. He said, my sheep know me and they want to be with me uh, and I, we are part of it. You know what I mean? And we want everybody to, to be a part of it as well. Yes. yes. And, 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 and being a part of God's kingdom really assures us of our future and determines certainty in our life, you know. Amen, amen. Important that we understand this. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we can see in, 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 in um, the temporary nature of all these kingdoms we are discussing shows, shows how humanity is. And it, humanity hasn't changed. You see them today. You see what's yeah. happening in Russia today. We see what's happening in, 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 in the Middle East between uh, Gaza or the Palestinians and the Israelites in Israel. Getting worse. Why, why, why are you so hungry? Mm. Need so much power, but it's because people don't worship God. They fear if they allow um, certain people to grow, and that those people will destroy them. It's again survival of the fittest. If you're a Christian, you believe, or you, you know, I wouldn't say just a Christian, but if you're a believer of God, God will protect you and keep you mm -hmm. safe and trust you. Mm -hmm. so I just want to switch it a little bit. Like last week again, we've seen the unfolding of these prophecies. But what is, what is so important is that we must see the contrast and where does these, um, these, um, these wars come from. And I want to close with dominion. That we as humanity, and we, we spoke about it now just before, and dominion over to Satan. Satan does take control. Um, um, 
Um, you know, I just want us to read Genesis 1 verse 28, and I'll read that part. It says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, this is not Adam and Eve, when he created us. Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God has given humanity dominion. But we have given that dominion over to Satan. And I'm going to read a verse that describes giving that dominion over. And we, 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 we discussed it a little bit. Romans 6 verse 16. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, like Adam and Eve did, you are slaves of the one you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. So you can either believe in God, obedience to God, or believing in God and believing in Satan. And that is what it leads. And many of these kingdoms had so much pride. They love the kingdom of Satan. They love the workings of Satan. I am strong and I can destroy. But we see Jesus' kingdom is total opposite. And this is what we were discussing earlier, that God protects. Leviticus 26, 3 to 4 says, If we walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in the due season, and land shall yield the increase, and the trees will, of the field shall yield their fruit. And this is what God promised us. I remember a story, in the story and you guys know it, in the Bible of Job. When God... And this speaks about the dominion Satan has on this earth as well. And this actually pulls the, the curtain away so that we can actually see what's happening in heaven. We can actually see what's unfolding. And even in the story of Daniel, um, we know that Gabriel was, was fighting the prince of Persia, which was Satan trying to come change the heart of the Persian king. And it was probably for him not to allow... Um, Daniel to Daniel, not Daniel, um, Ezra and all the other prophets to go back and rebuild the temple. I don't know what they were trying to win the heart of, of, of the king of Persia or the prince of Persia, but he had to call uh, Michael to help him fight that fight before they could meet with Daniel. So we see this unfolding of this blanket being not a blanket, sorry, the curtain being pulled away so that we can actually see this war is not just on this earth, but it's actually happening against principalities, against demons, against um, um, higher um, levels of power that we don't understand. And we saw in the story of, sorry, Job, that that flows actually down to us. When God met with all his sons, it says in heaven, in the story of Job, Job chapter 1, Satan was also there. And Satan walks, sorry, Satan came in and God asked him, where are you coming from? And Satan says, um, from going to and fro on the earth, which means he was telling God in, in some way, all the other sons, I am the representative of earth. I am the person that Adam and Eve has given dominion over. And God had to remind him, you don't have full dominion over the earth because there are people that believe in me. And God only mentioned one and he said, did you see my friend Job, my servant Job? And, and Satan had to step back and Satan said, yes, I know Job, but he only worships you because he made this choice like Leviticus says there and even Romans like I read. That, that he was, that Job was obedient to God and trusted God. And, um, and what did Satan say to God? Satan said, God, he only does this or worships you, obeys you because what you give him, you protect him, you give him like the Leviticus says, you protect him and you give him all this. You give you, him bribe. <laughs> sorry? Yeah, God was bribing him. <laughs> he was God. <laughs> For loving you. For loving you. Yeah. And God says, okay. And, and, and this, I'm going to end with this part in the story. And God said, okay, okay, Satan. I'm going to give Job into your hands and I'm going to take the protection away. 
But God was actually hoping that Satan would do the right thing or the just thing, which is to give mercy and grace to Job, to give the same like what God was, because God created us to serve one another, to help and love one another. But the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan is completely separate. And what did Satan do? He came He's down. Tried. He destroyed his children. They took his, his livestock and killed the, uh, the, the, the uh, servants and, and destroyed him. And these other countries that were around Job, these other kings or small, uh, I don't know, um, militia or armies, they came and take Job's stuff. But they were always there. God has always protected him. But this time Satan used them to destroy and take away from Job. And this is what we see in the stories of his Bible. There is these wars. And that is why I said we need to go back to that verse that clearly defines um, what we are talking about. So can we go back? I don't know. If, uh, let me see if I can go back um, to, the, uh, to the first verse that I said. Now you see this where it says, Daniel chapter 7 verse 2, In my vision at night, I looked and there before me were four winds of heaven ch churning up the great sea. These four winds are demonic angels of heaven. It's not four winds on earth. It's four winds of heaven. And I'm going to share with you a verse in Romans Romans chapter, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall, oh, sorry, I've read the wrong one. Sorry, let me just find it. Um, where did I put it? I knew I put it. But it's in Romans, it's in Revelation chapter 7, verses 2, I think. James, can you help me with it? Because I have to go out here. Revelation 7, verse 2? Verses 2, 3, and 4, I think. Okay. In Daniel said in my vision at night, I looked. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Revelation chapter 7. Oh, Revelation chapter 7. Yes, okay. Yes. I'll just bring it in a minute. I thought I put it down. Why didn't I put it down? Chapter 7? I did put it down. Which verse, Iper? Which verse? Uh, two, 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 6, I think. I'm not sure which verses it was, but I know it's in chapter 7. Okay, I read verse 2. It said, And I saw another angel ascending from yes. the east, having the seal of the loving God. Is that the one? Yes, I know where it is now, James. Sorry. I've got it here, sorry. Yep, yep, on top there. From verse 1 to 3. Sorry, James. From verse 1 to 3? Yes. Revelation? Yeah. I can't read over there. I have to read here okay. because... Okay, I'll, something... I'll read it. I'll read it. Yeah. 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 After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. You see that? Four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds that we're speaking about of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or the sea and on the tree. Then I saw another angel coming out from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and sea, to not harm the land or the sea, and the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. These four winds are demon-possessed angels, are demon-possessed people churning up the water, causing the wars to happen. The same, they always have been busy. They were all ready until God takes his protection away. And here we can see in verses Revelation chapter 7, and God is keeping their protection there for us today. That these winds and strife can happen at any time. And that behind all these wars that we see, behind all these wars, are demon-possessed people, are demon-possessed angels. 
They are demon. They encourage the wrong thing. They want to destroy humanity. And that is what they are. They have dominion because Adam and Eve have given dominion. Even Jesus Christ made that clear that Satan has certain dominion over us when we have given him the power. And we look today, and I place these photos here. This is Hiroshima. And that was the bomb, the picture of what we as humanity can do to one another. And how life can be, and how humanity chose it not to be. And Satan, it must be, everything must be dead and taken away. Because the one thing that Satan does and that Satan wants is to destroy us. And he, if you see Alexander the Great, he was a man of war. And I believe he worshipped a god of war, which was Satan. Because a person like that, that keeps on destroying and killing, can only be a man of war. And this is what war does. Look at the beautiful city of Gaza, how it was before. Look at it now. How these pictures are correct. But I, I cannot believe that we as humanity think that this is right and this is good. That leadership of our world accepts this to be right. And this is on the last photo that I have here at the bottom. This is Ukraine. These is places where people lived, stood on those balconies, walked along the road, played with the kids outside. Just destroy, just destroy. And there's one thing that I do hate, my brothers. There's one thing that I do hate is war. Because of one thing, I don't have a grandfather because of war. He was killed at the age of 28, very young. And I think there's still people dying today in Russia, Ukraine. They will never see their father again. They will never grow up properly. And my mom grew up in a, in a home where she could not even be with her mom because her mom had to work for her. So wars don't work. And I truly hate it. I, I hate the idea of war. And it is why when we go back and we look at Jesus Christ, who came to the world, and I just want to read you this. You know, the final war that's going to happen. I'm going to read you the verse of the final war. Revelation 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in a book of life, of the Lamb, slain from, from the foundation of the world. God has always been the Lamb and if you ask me about a leopard, a bear, a dragon, or a beast that you that's unnoticeable on earth, a lion, who would I stand next to is a lamb. Because a lamb would not hurt me, would not do anything against me. Would only be humble enough for me to kill him. And God has been a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm. Since the beginning of this world was created, even before it, I know that God has always had the characteristics of a lamb. And the world has always shown themselves to be beastly, ugly. And how can you understand pictures like this? How now we're talking about civilization. Go back two or three, 300 years ago, 
Who, who is more civilization? See, uh, is is them or us today? Look at look at those image. You see, yeah. you tell me. Doesn't change, James. I don't mm. think it changes. If we were given the opportunity to do just that, those four generals that took over from Alexander the Great, mm. they couldn't fight each other because maybe they were just as strong as one another. Mm. But if they had the opportunity, they would kill each other. Today, if America would, would be able to kill Russia, they would want to do it. If Russia wants to kill America, they would want to, if they have the opportunity to do so. Yeah. But most of those opportunities bring too much disaster. And people today, because after Christ, we became clear that we don't want this. We don't see ourselves as humanity to be like this. We don't have to be Christians to believe that this is wrong. Mm. You just know it's wrong. Mm. And these people that make the war, you will never find them fighting in the war. No. Send your children, my children, everybody's children to go and die for them. They already, they already, they already made, uh, made the house under the ground. Yeah. In they case something happened, something they will happened. hide themselves. You tell me. We don't have that, James. Yeah. But God told us, God told the Israelites, if you want kings like the other kingdoms, they will take your children to fight for them. They will take your children to marry them. They will take your wives. They will take everything. That's why we must only worship one God and obey. Our God says obey the laws of the government, I'm not going against the laws of the government. But if it is, if they tell me to, to go against the laws of God, I will not accept it. Mm. And we shouldn't. And one day we will be forced to go against the laws of God, but we will choose to stay faithful to God. Soon that will happen. Soon, very soon. Because we believe in the eternal Father, mm. eternal life, the God who was slain like a lamb from the foundation of the earth. They mm. carried him in chains, they whipped him, they nailed him, and he accepted him. He never lifted one finger to destroy nobody. Mm. They thought he was weak, but he was actually so strong. And the resurrection is a clear evidence of what he has done. Mm. Because he showed us what true love is. True love resurrects us and gives us hope. And I pray, my brothers, that this message of God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom can clearly be seen by humanity. Mm. So that we will make the right choices and God can come one day. Mm. Amen. Amen. Our heads for pray. Our Lord and Savior, we are thankful for the gift of your word again, dear Lord. You represent yourself of worthy of praise and holiness. You are so just and so right in everything you do. Because there's no finger we can show that you and say that you are unfair or unreasonable. If we understand the true principles of love, the love that you have for humanity, that it involves freedom of choice, freedom of ability to choose, for us to choose what is right and what is wrong. Mm. Father, we know that your kingdom are filled with love, truth, and freedom. And unless we know these principles, we, unless we know these principles, we will, if we don't know them, we will take away from others their freedoms. We will destroy them because we believe we are strong and we are right. Mm. But in your kingdom, only the evidence of our experience, the evidence of the word of God, and the evidence of nature or science mm. is a clear revelation of the God we serve. A God who loves us unconditionally. Mm. A God who gives all to win us back. And will even humble himself. 
and not become like the kings of this world that just want to take for himself, but rather you gave the Lord. You empty heaven for all of us so that we can have what we have today. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen, amen, amen.